dedication prairie poems from the sunflower state this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by annalisa bodker prairie poems from the sunflower state by lottie brown allen dedication to the dear pioneer mother who has ever been to me a source of encouragement and inspiration this little book is lovingly dedicated end of dedication recording by annalisa bodker sunflowers by lottie brown allen read for librivox dot org by annalie sabotker up from the wayside damp and cold cut of the early kansas mold blossomed the sunflowers green and gold eastward turning at dawn's first light hourly drinking the sunbeams bright westward waving a fond good night kissed by the sunshine and the dew under the kansas skies of blue like unto sunflowers the children grew bright eyes greeting the sun's first ray small hands eager for work or play young hearts singing the livelong day kansas sunflowers happy and free men and women that grew to be builders of kansas destiny end of poem this recording is in the public domain kansas day by lottie brown allen read for librivox dot org by annalisa bodker o oh, kansas land fair kansas land we come thy birthday morn to greet to fling fresh laurels at thy feet o central gem of our great land loved spot of the united band we hail this day our kansas land thou art our pride dear kansas land sweet peace and liberty are ours o land of luscious fruits and flowers of peaceful homes on hill and plain of lowing herds and waving grain of cities fair on every hand as now in joy and pride we stand may we thy children not forget but treasure in fond memory yet the awful price that has been paid the bitter tears that have been shed for thy broad acres kansas land and unto him whose guiding hand with sorrow's tears did christen thee and shape thy glorious destiny let there from us to-day arise melodious anthems to the skies from out thy borders kansas land end of poem this recording is in the public domain october by lottie brown allen read for librivox dot org by annalisa bodker o golden days o quiet peaceful days october's winsome voice we now can hear while all around her magic wand she plays to consummate the crowning of the year behold her mid a wealth of golden sheaves most glorious month of all the year she stands upon her brow a wreath of crimson leaves while purple clusters fill her outstretched hands how could we know that when the flower-strewn spring and all the happy summer days were past october would this golden mantle fling 
to warm our hearts ere comes the winter's blast then linger on fair days of golden light and grant to leave in us an afterglow that shall shine on throughout the winter night that shall not pale before the winter snow end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old old story by lottie brown allen read for librivox dot org by anna lisa bodker joyfully the hours were speeding and the children all unheeding flitted gaily to and fro at the farmhouse making merry hanging sprays of holly berry and the magic mistletoe dear old grandma meanwhile sitting in the firelight with her knitting sometimes joining in their glee spoke at last in gentle measure and they came with smiles of pleasure to their places at her knee come my dears and round me gather for without is wintry weather but within is warmth and cheer lay aside your pastimes yonder and the old old story ponder as the christmas tide draws near long ago in bygone ages oft we read from sacred pages shepherds watched their flocks by night when a beauteous angel found them and his glory shone around them till they trembled with affright but he said o oh, shepherds hear me do not flee but come ye near me goodly tidings do i bring list ye to the wondrous story christ the lord of light and glory unto you is born a king have ye then no thought of danger ye shall find him in a manger near the inn of bethlehem and ere he had ceased the story heavenly hosts were singing glory on earth peace good will to men and you know dears how they sought him and of gifts the wise men brought him as they journeyed from afar seeking for that babe of glory never doubting once the story guided by a single star and each year all gloom dispelling sweeter growing in the telling this old story ever new points to bethlehem's star that brightly shines above to guide us rightly shines my dears for me and you when the christmas bells are ringing our hearts choicest treasures bringing humbly may we offer then and with angels of the story we may sing the songs of glory peace on earth good will to men end of poem this recording is in the public domain san francisco by lottie brown allen read for librivox dot org by annalisa bodker a mighty nation mourns to-day a ruined city on the bay but yester eve the sunset shone through golden gate on spire and dome and seemed to linger and caress the city in its loveliness yet none could know and none could tell it was the sunset's last farewell no warning breathed the shades of night that crept around the city bright and silently each twinkling star shed its soft radiance from afar perchance a saviour's eyes looked down in grief upon the stricken town perchance his arms stretched forth again as they did o'er jerusalem oh wonderful is mystery that veil through which we cannot see thus came the awful earthquake shock that caused those massive walls to rock to sway and totter and to fall 
while smoke and flame engulfed them all too horrible for tongue to tell or pen to picture it as well for many perished in the fall nor answered back to loving call swiftly the wires from state to state foretold the city's awful fate we who could read of foreign wars destruction on italian shores now stand too dumb to cry or moan that this should happen to our own for who is there from shore to shore that hath some loved one there or more or hath he not what heart so cold that could at such a time withhold if there remain a thought of good the love of common brotherhood and when our daily paths we trod a nation's prayers went up to god that blessed father of us all who noteth every sparrow's fall be merciful dear lord we plead sustain them in their time of need from out that fiery furnace there where brave men toiled nor would despair methinks a shepherd called his flock away from flame and earthquake shock away he led their wandering feet where flowers bloomed mid grasses sweet and there he bade their tears be dried to pitch their tents and to abide three hundred thousand souls were there dependent on his tender care another story comes to me another scene beside the sea the time is evening calm and sweet a multitude at jesus feet hungry and weary with the day he would not send them thus away turning to his disciples near he spoke in tones so soft and clear that we too hear those accents sweet what hast thou here for them to eat gladly we answer to his call dear lord there is enough for all thus may our prayers the tears we shed for san francisco's ashy bed refresh our land from shore to shore and make it better than before our father knoweth while we plead of what his children most have need end of poem this recording is in the public domain kansas dreams by lottie brown allen read for librivox dot org by annalisa bodker o oh, beautiful kansas whose autumn days are agleam with october's glow whose hills are crowned with a purple haze that kisses the vales below my thoughts fly away to the land of dreams to the days of long ago and dreaming i seem to understand and can tell why i love you so back through a vista of bygone years from under your sunny skies beyond the reach of my memory come my mother's lullabies as she sits in her home on the banks of the caw at the close of an autumn day rocking her babe while she softly sings low snatches of nelly gray around her twilight shadows creep while in slumber the baby lies but the mother has no thought of sleep and lifting her trustful eyes through difficulties beyond the stars her whispered prayers arise that her slumbering babe may never know the terrible blight of war that future joys may soon blot out dark days that have gone before that god in his mercy will safely shield the absent one whom she knew must spend that night on the battlefield in his army coat of blue o oh, beautiful glimpse of the mother love that to-day i so plainly see it is hidden away in a vanished past and revealed in my dreams to me soft shadowy wings seem to carry me 
through the still of that autumn night till afar in the distance i dimly see the flicker of campfires bright strange and wild is the thrilling scene as it bursts upon my view the campfires lit in the long ago by the then brave boys in blue and faintly borne through the starry night what falls on my listening ear i eagerly strain for a better sight oh would that i were more near is it the murmuring grasses low or the fitful night winds moan ah tis never forget the dear ones that cluster round thy home they are singing of home o kansas land they are here for their homes and thee facing a battlefield they stand for union and liberty tenderly treasure them on thy breast who fell in that cause so true scatter bright flowers where they sweetly rest our dear ones who wore the blue and whether with golden sunbeams fair or the patter of raindrops wild sing to them while they slumber there as a mother sings to her child and again sometimes in my dreams i see broad stretches of prairie grand reaching away to the sunny skies entrancing on every hand and seeking wild flowers with the butterflies flits a joyous child carefree while she sings from her soul with the happy birds my country tis of thee fair kansas thy present is just as dear as the past can ever be but beautiful dreams of the days that are gone will ever come back to me and whenever from out thy portals wide my footsteps should chance to roam my heart will thrill with a sense of pride at the measures of home sweet home and whether i dwell in my native clime or over the distant sea i ever as now shall hold thee mine for i am a part of thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain what christmas means by lottie brown allen read for librivox dot org by annalisa vodker the christmas time has come again it comes but once a year and that is why to boys and girls it is the time most dear it means just lots and lots of things and though i'm small you see i know it doesn't mean the same to you it does to me i've noticed when we children tell queer tales of old saint nick that baby listens wonderingly and leaves his playthings quick to hear how the old fellow comes a dashing in his sleigh along the housetops every one in such a funny way and how through every chimney black so far far down below he bravely bears his shining pack to fill each stocking row then baby clasps his little hands and laughs and shouts with glee to him it means a fairyland of christmas mystery when little sister gaily sings about the christmas tide of lovely dolls old santa brings and picture books beside and when she dreams of christmas trees her stockings hanging near i know it means that christmas day is best of all the year to boys like me that's older grown it means a great deal more there's knives and sleds and skates and things and story-books galore and then in our dear sunday school we learn another thing about the babe of bethlehem the birthday of our king but when we see our mother smile hear father's words of cheer as they bid friends to bide a while within our gates each year as christmas time is drawing on the meaning's plainer then it speaks to them of peace on earth 
and of goodwill to men. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Wash Place by Judd Mortimer Lewis Used by Permission by Lottie Brown Allen Read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker She was such a little mother, so absurdly young, that while Tears are trembling on my lashes, at her memory I smile. At the very youngness of her, just a little girl she seems, smiling at me from the distance, singing to me in my dreams. Lullabies we all remember, but I mostly see her face, smiling through the clouds of steam that almost hide the old wash place. Sometimes in my dreams a dogwood blossom glimmers in her hair, and I hear a redbird whistle, and the dream is free from care. Then a man comes in the picture like a dream and goes away, waving to the little mother from the ranks of men in gray. And from then the dogwood blossoms never glimmer any more, and the red bird sings no longer round the wash place as of yore. Three of us, and just the little bit of mother to the brood, singing while her heart was breaking in the woodland solitude, with the homely tubs and kettle and the soap gourd and the stick, the old battling stick, the memory catches at my throat so quick that I scarce can choke the sob back at the picture of the face, smiling bravely from the distance through the steam of the wash place. Yes, I carried water for her while the baby went to sleep, with the songs that sister sung her where the wash lay in a heap, and I sought dry sticks and piled them neath the kettle. All my joy in the dreams that come back to me is that I was born a boy, and could help the little mother, and was glad to help her too, in the tasks about the wash place where there was so much to do. Can we babies understand it when a heart's about to break? We were babies, but we seem to know, somehow, for mother's sake. We must help to bear a burden which we could not comprehend, and our puny arms about her seem to strengthen her and lend her a strength no little bit of mother could have got elsewhere as she toiled about the wash place with her heart bowed down with care. Some days' tasks seemed over dreary and the hours over long, but she'd catch her eyes fixed on her and would tremble into song. But the world of heartbreak throbbing through the counterfeited joy somehow would play on the heartstrings of the little girl and boy and the little baby sister, and we'd snuggle face to face, heart to heart, her arms around us, kneeling at the old wash place. Then one morning came a message, came in with the morning's gleam. How it came is lost or hidden in the shadows of the dream. But with it, hope went out from her, and she seemed to hark no more for a voice across the distance, for a footstep at the door. And she kneeled there in the wash place, kneeled with sister girl and me, and I know now that that moment was her soul's Gethsemane. Then the washings came more often. There were other heaps of clothes. Day by day the clouds of sudsy steam from the old kettle rose, Day by day her love grew stronger in the worry and the smart of her heartache she would rush to and would clasp us to her heart. And she'd strive to coax her lips to curve into a snatch of song. But the wash place called and called her and its tasks were hard and long. 
not long since i heard a woman say in sneering tones and low huh his mother did our washing my own mother told me so whiter than the dogwood blossom sweeter than it e'er could be shown the truth of that vile whisper for she did it all for me and for sister girl and baby oh the whisper it was base but a soul was born to heaven from that lowly old wash place why it doesn't seem that mother was quite grown up when she died such a little bit of mother oh the years are long and wide since she went away and left us with the old smile on her face leaving us but just a memory of the homely old wash place i know father beckoned to her by the look that overcast her sweet face but we still miss her shall as long as life shall last End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Reverie on Reading the Old Wash Place by Lottie Brown Allen. Read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker. There are pictures drawn by artists with the brush and with the pen that have thrilled the very nations and have stirred the hearts of men but i think the sweetest pictures we have ever seen or heard are the ones drawn by the heart-strings that are painted word by word such a picture lies before me painted by a loyal son i can see it oh so plainly for so well it has been done i can see the little mother with the face so young and fair with the smile so full of sunshine dogwood blossoms in her hair as she flits about the wash place softly singing in her joy lullabies that charm her hearers babe and sister girl and boy i can hear the redbirds whistle even on the very day when that last farewell waved fondly from the ranks of men in gray i can see the little nestlings that dear little brood of three in the steam of the old wash place watching mother earnestly while she toils with tubs and kettle and the soap gourd and the stick in the meantime singing bravely while her heart grew faint and sick but those little bright-eyed darlings must not feel the sting of war so she strove to carol gaily just as she had done of yore i can feel the solemn stillness that throughout the morning lay when there came the cruel message dashing all her hopes away when the birds forgot to warble forth their wonted melodies and the flowers shed the teardrops that had fallen from the skies i can see her in the wash place kneeling there among the three for their sakes so bravely facing this her soul's gethsemane o ye world of restless mothers what can give you sweeter bliss than to leave your sons and daughters memories that equal this to what greater heights aspire you little mothers young and fair than those reached while you are kneeling with your little ones in prayer than to be as this dear mother worthy of a diadem ah the one who scorned her efforts may not touch her garment's hem this old world is but a wash place where we labor day by day where the prince of earth and heaven came to wash our sins away and the sweetness of his patience and the youngness of his years make our hearts to ache with pity and our eyes to fill with tears oh the joy that he is risen and beyond the jasper sea mid the father's many mansions doth prepare for such as she 
there when earthly tasks are ended through his mercy and his grace one by one his saints shall gather from this steamy old wash place end of poem this recording is in the public domain Christmas Tide by Lottie Brown Allen read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker Turn ye away from your hearth fires bright, women and men of the world tonight. Cease for a moment your jest and mirth. Hark to the message of peace on earth. Join ye the shepherds who watch their sheep tending their fires lest they fall asleep under the arch of the starlit sky hear ye the glory to god on high take just a glimpse of the heavenly throng joyously chanting the glad new song out of the midst of those realms of light know that your savior is born to-night End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Friend by Lottie Brown Allen. Read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker. There is no flock, however watched and tended, but one dead lamb is there. There is no fireside, howsoe'er defended, but has one vacant chair. Longfellow We weep with you in your dark despair, because of your fireside's vacant chair, because from your arms a dear form has slipped, and into the grave the wee feet have tripped. But we know in the city with streets of gold the sweet spirit is safe in the upper fold beyond the shores of the jasper sea from sorrow and pain of earth set free a heavenly cherub with love-lit eyes looks forth from the gateway of paradise a heavenly cherub whose baby face is filled with the joy of that holy place. Picture him there in that beautiful spot, mid banks of blooming forget-me-not. By the sweet, clear river of life he stands and beckons to you with his baby hands. From those gates of pearl and those streets of gold, where your darling is safe, in the upper fold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. June by Lottie Brown Allen. Read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker. Oh, what is more sweet than the month of June when our senses thrill? and our hearts keep tune to the song of the birds and the rose in bloom oh what is more joy than the early gray of the dewy morn and the sun's first ray that herald the dawn of a perfect day oh what is more fair as the sun climbs high than the azure hue of the summer sky and the snow-white clouds drifting idly by Oh, what is more pure than the summer air that wafts from the woodlands and the gardens fair a fragrance and perfume so rich and rare oh what is more dear than the twilight hour when the daylight fades and each nodding flower is kissed by the moonbeam's mystic power o oh, summer queen you are gone too soon with your sunny days and your shining moon, with your golden grain and your wealth of bloom. And if we could hold in some magic way 
to your trailing robes for a single day. Dear month of June, we would bid you stay. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Gingerbread Story by Lottie Brown Allen Read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker I love to note a baby's way The grace of childhood is so sweet I gave a tiny friend one day A piece of gingerbread to eat And I much pleasure gained the while To see the happy little smile Then straightway I forgot the act as i usually do in fact a few days more the same wee tot tapped softly at my kitchen door some ripe tomatoes he had brought as he had often done before i chatted as i took his pan while through my brain the question ran if there was anything i had with which to please the little lad i asked if he liked honey sweet knowing some children prize the treat not very well he shyly said then boldly raised his little head while bravely forth his wee voice rings but i like gingerbread and things was ever baby tacked more sweet swiftly i ran with flying feet almost afraid to lift the lid for fear no gingerbread it hid that baby faith i must not shake Oh, joy, there's one small piece of cake. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Kansas Prayer by Lottie Brown Allen Read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker O Lord of mercy, draw thou near a suppliant's nation's prayer to hear. With troubled hearts we come to thee, with visions dim that cannot see, with lips that know not what to say. Teach us, our Father, how to pray. Dark clouds of war above us spread, dire symbols of distress and dread. And stand we with reluctant feet, the awful sacrifice to meet. O oh, fill us with a fire divine, and let our will submerge in thine. There comes to us across the sea oppression's cry for liberty. Help us no longer to withhold naught we can give of script or gold. Help us to send our armies strong. Let freedom be their battle song. Our sons, dear Lord, our hearts grow cold, more precious far than all our gold. Grant these we give with love and trust, shall triumph in a cause so just. Gird with thine armor every one, O thou who gave thine only son. All through the thickest of the fight, all through the long hours of the night, May we, O Lord, thy watchtowers keep, nor for one moment fall asleep, till breaks the dawn when strife shall cease, the dawn of universal peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Our Heroes by Lottie Brown Allen Read for LibriVox.org By Annalisa Bodker 1917 to 1918 The year is past, the guns are stilled, The year of grief and pain. The lads we gave to liberty Are coming home again. With throbbing hearts, that seem to quell the mighty cannon's roar. We wait for footsteps loved so well to greet them at the door. With tears of joy we lift the latch once more to clasp our own. Praise God, who kept our lads for us 
and brought them safely home. But some came not. In foreign fields they fell mid poppies red, or in the camp or neath the wave. They tell us they are dead. Believe it not, they did not die, our lads who gave their all. For there were everlasting arms to save them from the fall. While holy angels softly swept across the land and sea, and gently bore their spirits home to live eternally. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Mothers by Lottie Brown Allen Read for LibriVox.org by Annalisa Bodker A mother smiled as she waved goodbye and tried to stifle the pain as she thought of the many weary days ere they should come back again she knew that her heart did not bid them stay for proud and happy was she that each had eagerly entered the fray in the struggle for liberty she prayed as they passed from her misty sight dear father protect from harm our sailor boys in the cause for right by the strength of thy mighty arm and when their ship shall be tempest-tossed and the rolling waves leap high as they bear supplies to yon fighting host may they know that thou art nigh draw near at the beautiful sunset hour when the calm waves ripple green to strip that hand of its deadly power that aims from the submarine be thou their guide while they prove their worth oh sweet is the thought to me that when our saviour walked on this earth he likewise walked on the sea wild and rocky the pathway was american mothers trod as they daily strove to help the cause by keeping it close to god and when the victorious message came from the stricken fields of war their praise upwafted with one acclaim resounded from shore to shore praise god they sang for our stalwart sons give praise for our native land for the blessings of liberty and love the emblems for which we stand and the sailor's mother with happy tears greeted each returning son for well she knew that the coming years would revere their work well done as they bent to kiss her upturned face their hearts seemed to understand and they told her tales of from place to place they had touched in a foreign land with seldom a word of sickness or pain or the hardships of war now done of the long hours spent in the pouring rain on watch or behind the gun but often she questioned from day to day and carefully gleaned the rest and that was the part which she hid away in the depths of her loving breast once when she asked of the ocean storm of how terrible it might be they spoke of a sailor who came to harm of a comrade lost at sea how his fragile form had been snatched away on the crest of a mighty wave beyond the reach of their wind-tossed craft or their human power to save and the mother's heart gave a throb of pain of pity and sympathy for the lad and that other she did not know his mother oh where was she did she plead in vain in an earthly home bowed low on her bended knee oh father send aid through the ocean's foam to rescue my boy for me or did she reach forth from the heavenly gate from those realms of endless day and whisper dear lord tis so long to wait bear him safely home i pray god only knows for we cannot tell just plead as to us seems best to a loving father who doeth well and trust unto him the rest 
for he that heareth the orphan's cry and noteth the sparrow's fall will not the mothers of men pass by but tenderly care for all end of poem this recording is in the public domain christmas carol by lottie brown allen read for LibriVox.org by annalisa bodker long ago the holy angels sang from the skies of glory bright or the drowsy shepherds watching by their silent flocks at night and their song was glory 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 be to god on high peace and good will to his children rang the chorus from the sky and an angel told the story joyful tidings do we bring god has sent to earth from heaven christ your savior and your king go and seek in yonder village hasten and be not afraid he is born among the lowly and is in a manger laid ages pass but not the story by the shining angel told tis man's greatest gift and blessing and it shall never grow old and the children love to hear it best of all at christmas tide the sweet story of the christ child whose dear name was glorified and within the many churches that are builded in his name with glad gifts to one another do we honor him again while thousands of children's voices sing his glory and his love as the holy angels sang it from the shining skies above tis by far the sweetest music mortal ears have heard since then happy childish voices chanting peace on earth good will to men o'er the earth resounds the anthem glory be to god on high peace and good will to his children rings the echo from the sky end of poem this recording is in the public domain kansas by lottie brown allen read for LibriVox.org by annalisa bodker do you know where the sun shines brightest out in the golden west do you know where the snow falls whitest the land that i love the best do you know where the skies are bluest bending above the plain do you know where the hearts are truest bidding you come again do you know where the flowers are fairest crimson purple and gold do you know where the fruits are rarest bestowing a wealth untold do you know where the bird sings sweetest ever along the way bespeaking a joy the completest caroling all the day do you know where the waving sunflower nods to the passerby do you know where the prairie sunset flames over earth and sky do you know but ah uh, you have guessed it and do not need to be told tis kansas your eyes have expressed it the land that will never grow old end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of prairie poems from the sunflower state by Lottie Brown Allen